For those of you who said you couldn't do it, I'm going to run around very quickly and see, one, have you drawn a diagram, two, is your diagram correct, and three, do you have a baseline in the correct position? So if you haven't, draw it very quickly. Diagram... Wait, wait, wait. sorry, it's question six, is the, does the, um, where does the pendulum start? That's what I want to see from you, directly oh, okay. above. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I want, yeah. Yeah, I want you to have a quick go at it, and I want you to put the baseline in properly. I can get rid of all of this. I need to be the main one. Up until, up until now, all the other questions we've done started off horizontally and then the thing swung down and you had to get it down here. Here we read the question carefully. If the system is released from arrest when Q is vertically above P, at the moment we had P and Q, so that's certainly Q is not above P. So the only way it will work for Q to be vertically above P is for that to be Q and that to be P. That again, my axis is still the same, going into there. So now if that's my axis, and I release it from there, where is it going to finish up? It's going to swing down like that. In fact, the question says, find its angular speed when this, and the speed of the center of the disk when Q is vertically below the point P. So the only way that can be below the point P is if the whole thing swings down, and you get it down to there. Uh, sir, yeah. is omega equal to the angle, angular velocity? Yes. Because in the last class we said there's a difference between linear speed and angular speed. If I close the door, the angular speed is how quickly the angle is changing. Okay. The linear speed is how quickly, if you were a beetle on that door, just sitting there. If you're on the outside, you'll be going an awful lot more quickly than if you're a beetle on the inside. So the quicker you're going is the linear speed. So this is basically my diagram. Starts up here, and the question the question tells me it starts up here. The question says find its angular speed when it's down here. My next thing to make progress is I need to draw a baseline. What's my rule for the baseline? Center of the lowest. So the center of gravity of the lowest object. So there's my disk. So the center of gravity of the lowest object will be right there. So BL for baseline. It doesn't have to go there, but it just it makes things easier if it does go there. Next step, how do I start off? My overall rule is what? Rotational energy plus potential energy at the beginning equals rotational energy plus potential energy at the end. And I've got to say rotational energy for which part? Everything. So we call it the system. Plus potential energy of the disk. Plus yeah, we've got to break the potential energy up because they're going to have different heights. The disk is going to have a different height than their own, oh, whereas it's all going to have the same rotational energy. Equals, it's all going to have the same rotational energy down at the bottom. So that's for the system, plus potential energy for the disk at the bottom, plus potential energy for the rod at the bottom. So all of this is at the start point. And all of this is the input. So, rotational energy for the system at the beginning. Zero. Why zero? Because it's omega, because omega is zero. Why is omega zero? Because there's no velocity. It has no How do you know there's no velocity? Because it's starting. How do you know it starts? Oh, it's not What does it say? It's not moving. What does it say? There's no angular. From rest. What does it say? From rest. Release from rest. The reason I'm zoning in on that and just highlighting it is because sometimes it will actually be given an initial push down here. So you've got to zone right in and say, does it say release from rest or does it say it's given an initial velocity? If it was given an initial velocity, then it would have a half I omega square term up there. So just be careful. Sometimes it will, usually it won't. Does it say release from rest or not? That's the bit. Don't assume it. So in this case, it says release from rest, so no rotational energy. Right, here's where the fun starts. Potential energy formula is MGH, and they're all mass m, so I don't have to worry about that, because that's a mistake people can make. G is just G. What's H for the disk? H is the distance from where to where? From the center of the bottom. Okay, from my baseline to, to the center of gravity of the object I'm talking about. So this is 4L from there to there. This is L from there to there. This is 4L from there to there. And we've got 
So from the baseline to there is going to be what? Wait, from the baseline to where the the center of gravity of the object that you're looking at. So L four plus four plus L is a total of ten L. That's the disc. The rod is going to be mg from a baseline to the center of gravity. It's going to be L and four L is five L. And how far up here? To the center to the center of gravity, which is there. So it's two L from there to there. So four, five, six, and one is seven. Equals rotational energy for the system. My general formula. Half of I omega squared. Half I omega squared. And here we're going to put in our answer for I. What was I? So one eight five m l squared over six. One eight five m l squared over six. Six. So it's a half. I omega squared plus potential energy of the disk. It's zero. 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 Because I put my baseline through the center of gravity, there is no height here. So that bit goes to zero. Plus potential energy of the rod. Mg3 Mg distance from here to the center of gravity. 3m. 2L from there to there, plus the L down there is 3L. And it should make all my M's the same. So you get a small M. So what can go? M. You can bring that around me for all of it. In the L, 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 and the square term. You can bring 14G on the left. I can bring which? If you can have 14 G over that, you bring over the 3. 14 G equals 10 and 7 is 17. Minus 3 <coughs> is 14. In fact, I tell you where you're going to do this. That's going to be 14 G. Is that what it is? Yeah. Is equal to a half all of that by omega squared. And I'm not going to spend too much time at this. That's L. So as a result, somewhere along the line, I get omega equals what? The root of what is the THE? Over uh, 185. L. L. L below the line? Yeah. Square root of all of that. So that becomes your answer. So you play around with this, you finish up with this thing. So the technique is the very same as before, but you've got to be careful of what you do in setting up your diagram where you put the baseline. We did have the very last part of it, I think it says find its angular speed and the speed of the center of the disk when Q is vertically below P. So the speed of the center of the disk, so this big big thing basically just swings down like that, and it's going to move fairly quickly down here, but a little part here is going to move a lot more slowly than a part out here, which is going to move a lot more quickly. How do I find out how quickly a little point that it moves? V equals V equals what? M R. V equals R. Omega. So that's the linear velocity, which I'm looking for, is equal to the radius times the angular velocity. The angular velocity is constant no matter what point you're on. Because it's all facing out an angle of what to get from there to there? Which is, try not to talk radians, it is pi. So it's pi radians. So the whole, no matter where you are, you're tracing out an angle of pi radians in the same amount of time. So the omega is the same. What's the r going to be? Pi r. It's the distance from a point of rotation to the point that I'm looking at. And it says the center of the disk. So it's the center of the disk. So from there, my point of rotation is 5L. So it's 5L multiplied by my omega, which is 168G over 185L. And I'm sure if you leave it like that, you probably get full marks. So alternatively, in fact, I'd say without saying any more about it, there's too much point. Yeah, really. that's not. Just... You could do something with the L's, and you could bring an L inside and it cancel. So if I brought that in here, L it'd just be like L squared, and then one of those squares would cancel the bit down there. It's, it's fine. Yeah. Any questions? That was number six, part B. Okay, you can flick it off, Jimmy.